We've got Morenci hosting Phoenix Arizona Lutheran Academy in the 2A state playoffs, so enough chit chat already, let's get to the highlights. After forcing a three and out, Morenci gives the ball to Steven Chavarria, who busts through the left side and he could almost go all the way, getting pushed out at the eight. The big run was negated by a penalty, however, and Morenci ended up punting as well. On third and eight, the Coyotes do a little trickery with a delayed draw, and as Morenci prepares for a pass, Brandon Garcia takes the handoff and goes straight up the middle, 72 yards untouched to give Arizona Lutheran the early 8-0 lead. The Wildcats methodically worked the ball down the field in the second quarter, chewing up clock five yards at a turn and finished the drive with a two-yard quarterback keeper by Nico Tarasco. The two-point conversion was good and we were all knotted up at eight with five minutes and change to the half. A Morenci punt was muffed and recovered by Pacheco, but the ref said Tanner Hudman interfered with the catch and the Coyotes were in business with time running out in the half. The Coyotes' air attack then came alive as Nick Neighbor hit Garcia and Jamie Hine on some tosses to work the ball down to the five-yard line with just 34 seconds left in the half. Morenci's bend but don't break defense held, however, and after the field goal attempt went wide right, the teams went into the half knotted up at eight. You can only hold Steven Chavarria back for so long, and on the first play from scrimmage in the third quarter, Chavarria takes the handoff around the left side, and he could go all the way 65 yards for the go-ahead score. The extra point was good and Morenci was up 15 to 8. The Morenci defense then stepped up and Garcia gets separated from the ball by Carrasco and Mark Royball and the Coyotes are forced to punt. The Coyotes didn't lie down however and after a Morenci punt Garcia heads up the gut and battles his way 15 yards for a TD. Garcia's two-point conversion try was stuffed by Isaiah Sanchez, however, and Morenci clung on to a 15-14 lead. After forcing a Morenci punt in the fourth quarter, Arizona Lutheran again ran the same delayed draw, and Garcia scampered 51 yards to set up the Coyotes at first and goal from the nine. On third and goal from the three, however, Neighbors pass is knocked down and the Coyotes settle for a field goal, which gives them a 17-15 lead with just under seven minutes left in the game. Morenci had the immediate answer, however, as Carrasco takes the ensuing kickoff on a bounce at the 22 and weaves his way through defenders until popping out on the right side and they're not gonna catch him as he goes 78 yards on the return to put Morenci up 21 to 17. Then on fourth and three from the Morenci 45, Garcia can't hang on to the handoff and by the time he recovers the fumble it goes for a loss and a turnover on downs. On the very next play, Chavarria rides the momentum as he zips and zaps all the way down to the Coyotes' 30-yard line. Then on fourth down and 10 at the 30 with 2.16 left in the game, Carrasco pitches to Royball. Who's gonna get tackled? No! He throws it up for grabs and it's tipped, but Tito Casillas comes down with the touchdown to put Morenci up 27-17 over Arizona Lutheran Academy. The Coyotes take to the air to attempt to come back, but Royball snags the ball on the INT, and he's heading the other way in a hurry. Royball puts on the brakes, and makes a Coyote miss, and then he puts it in gear again, and he spins out of another tackle all the way down to the five-yard line. There was a flag, however, and while the interception stood, the run back was negated due to this tough crack back block by Isaac Pacheco that leveled Tyson Bicciolis, who would eventually walk off the field on his own power. Morenci then ran out most of the rest of the clock and left the field victorious with its 27-17 win. The prize for their effort? A date with the number one ranked Round Valley Elks and Eager next week. It was really tight, especially in the first oh, half. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, back and forth. I, we kind of anticipated that's the way it was going to be. I mean, 8-9 game, you, you anticipate it's going to be close and, and that we're both going to battle and be ready to go. And, that's exactly what happened. We had to deal with adversity on our first drive. I mean, we got a couple of penalties got called back. We got a touchdown called back. And so, you know, we didn't give up. Our, they scored first. And a lot of times when another, the other team scores first, you know, in the past, our guys, our guys used to give up. Not anymore. These guys have so much heart and so much pride and so much just just dedication that I knew that they were gonna they were gonna come through and, and sure enough they did. Well, you know that that fourth down fumble the uh, that was dumb uh, two play calls on my part. 
uh, put us in that position. Um, yeah, fumble happened, but you know, honestly, we shouldn't have been in that position. I should have done something different than the uh, play before. You know, Morenci, they came out and they hit us, and we knew they were going to. Uh, they made some great adjustments on our double wing. Uh, you know, and kind of stymied that, so we kind of went away from our double wing a little bit. I uh, just ran straight up, uh, you know, a little bit full house stuff, uh, and I, and you know, had a little bit more success on that. You know, and you know, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot here and there, and they took advantage of you know a few few mistakes on our part, you know, and uh, you know, put ourselves in a position, you know, a quarterback bootleg on third and eight, and we're yelling out, "It's coming!" and, and we just didn't make the play. Uh, you know, and then that tip play right at the end, I mean, you know, ball just bounces that way, unfortunately. So, yeah, congratulations to them. And unfortunately, you know, we're saying bye to seven seniors and, you know, the young guys have a learning experience and so do us coaches. I mean, just the dedication, hard work and everything and all the love that our team has for each other and just individually. I mean, it's a team sport. You can't do it on your own. And uh, I'm just really proud of my brothers. You know, we're brothers on the battlefield. That's all it is. You got to go out there and give it your all. If you don't, then you're just going to lose. And just dedication and push yourself as hard as you can every play. The past three games, our defense, we had two shutouts. We shut out Miami. We turned around and shut out a really good Pima team. And, you know, and then, we, and then here with, with these guys and, and the type of offense that they play, it, it's, it's really hard to to just you know grind and, and keep those guys. Our defense was ready and they were up for the task. And, and, and here with the way these guys run their offense, we had to be very disciplined as far as our defense went. We had to make sure we were watching guards and not getting caught up in the backfield. And I'm just proud of our defense. I mean, they came to play. We had a pick six, again, got called back. I mean, it, it just seems like that, but it didn't phase our guys. I mean, our, our guys are just good. The defense battles all the time, play after play. Isaiah Sanchez in the middle. Oh, he just makes things happen. And I'm, I'm just proud of these guys, Matt Garcia. I mean, Nico Car Carrasco, that guy is just incredible. I mean, he's our quarterback, and then he's our general on defense. And, you know, if, if you ever ask for a senior leader like that, I mean, he would. if you would look that up in the dictionary, there would be a picture of Nico Carrasco because he's such a leader. And he leads by example a lot. He's not a man of many words, but, man, he can lead. So I'm just real proud of these guys. I mean, we're looking forward to the opportunity. It's going to be a challenge. Round Valley is incredible, and Coach Bell does an awesome job over there. And so, I mean, at least we get a shot, and, and I'm looking forward to that. Reporting from Marenzi for Gila Valley Central, I'm John Johnson.